Imagine a world where only 1,280 humans were left alive, just a small group standing between survival and extinction. This isn't science fiction. It's our history. Around 900,000 years ago, our distant ancestors faced a population crash so severe that it nearly wiped them out. Yet, against all odds, they survived. But how did they do it, and what pushed them to the brink? Let's dive into this remarkable chapter of our past. Discovering the Ancient Bottleneck Modern humans, or Homo sapiens, have been around for about 300,000 years, evolving from earlier human ancestors. While we've uncovered a lot about our past, there's still much we don't know, especially about those ancient ancestors and where they lived. But a study published in August 2023 revealed something remarkable. Our ancestors may have been on the brink of extinction around 900 to 800,000 years ago. These were not modern humans like us but our distant relatives. According to the study, during this period, the human population suffered a massive decline, losing nearly 98.7% of its numbers. To put it in perspective, only about 1,280 individuals were left who could breed and pass on their genes. This tiny population struggled to survive for over 100,000 years. Our ancestors had to survive through this long, harsh period with their numbers drastically reduced. If they hadn't made it through, we wouldn't be here today. Now, think about the doomsday clock. You've probably heard about it. It's a symbol that shows how close humanity is to global catastrophe, like a nuclear disaster. Right now, it's set at 90 seconds to midnight, meaning we're dangerously close to a major threat. But if that clock had existed 900,000 years ago, it might have shown just one second left before midnight. The study's authors believe that our ancestors were dangerously close to extinction during this dramatic population decline. They compare this situation to the endangered animal species we see today, but not everyone agrees with the study's findings. Some experts have doubts about how strong the evidence really is. Before this huge drop in numbers, our ancestors had a much larger population, between 58,600 and 135,000 individuals who could breed. So what caused their numbers to shrink to just 1,280 and stay that way for over 100,000 years? The researchers think that a major reason was extreme cooling that began around 900,000 years ago. There's geological evidence that backs this up. This cooling period also brought severe droughts in Africa and led to the decline of other species that our ancestors likely depended on for food. Environmental Turmoil But what exactly triggered this population drop? The genetic data doesn't give us all the answers, but scientists know that during this time, the Earth's environment went through big changes. This period is known as the Middle Pleistocene Transition, and it brought significant climate changes. Around 900,000 years ago, the Earth got much colder. Glaciers grew, the seas got chiller, droughts lasted longer, and monsoons became stronger. Wildlife in Africa and Eurasia also changed a lot during this time. We know from research that changes in climate and environment have played a big role in human evolution. But it doesn't seem like this era caused a global population drop among other early human species that weren't directly related to us. This makes the near extinction of our direct ancestors even more mysterious. Nick Ashton, who's a Paleolithic archaeologist at the British Museum, wasn't involved in the study, but he had some interesting thoughts. He pointed out that there are many archaeological sites in Africa and Eurasia from the time when this population bottleneck supposedly happened. This suggests that if there was a population crash, it probably only affected a specific group, likely in Africa, who might be the direct ancestors of modern humans. Ashton thinks it's worth digging deeper to figure out what might have caused this bottleneck. Was it a regional drought, volcanic activity, or maybe other environmental factors? It's a mystery worth solving. Now, here's something truly mind-blowing. The study suggests that our ancestors managed to survive with these tiny, precarious numbers for an incredibly long time, around 120,000 years. Just think about that. For thousands of generations, our ancestors were barely hanging on. 
But when the conditions improved, maybe the climate became more favorable or perhaps they mastered the use of fire, our ancestors made a remarkable comeback. By about 813,000 years ago, their population in Africa had increased by a factor of 20. The researchers behind this study came to a pretty wild conclusion. Our human ancestors went through a severe population bottleneck, basically a time when their numbers dropped drastically. And they figured this out by analyzing genetic data from over 3,000 modern humans, like you and me. But this wasn't the only time humans faced a bottleneck. There have been several bottlenecks of varying scales as humans evolved and spread across the globe. One of the most significant bottlenecks happened around 60,000 years ago, when a small group of modern humans left Africa and began to populate other parts of the world. This event drastically reduced the genetic diversity among non-African populations. In fact, even today, there's more genetic diversity among people of African descent than in the rest of the world combined. This bottleneck had a lasting impact, shaping the genetic makeup of entire continents. As humans continued to move and settle in new places, they faced more bottlenecks. A much more recent example can be seen with the Polynesians, who settled island after island in the vast Pacific Ocean. Every time a small group of settlers moved to a new island, they created a mini bottleneck, which reduced genetic diversity further. These repeated bottlenecks shaped the genetic landscape of Polynesian populations, leaving traces that scientists can still observe today. Impacts on Human Evolution and Genetic Diversity So, what did they find? The geneticists think that during this bottleneck, there was likely a lot of inbreeding. When you have such a small population, it's almost impossible to avoid. This inbreeding could explain why we still see a loss in genetic diversity today. But they also think that this bottleneck might have led to the rise of a new hominin species. This species could be the last common ancestor of the Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans. The timing of this bottleneck matches up with some other genetic estimates that place the appearance of a new hominin species around this same time. How did they figure all this out? They tracked gene variants from those 3,000 people to draw conclusions about how our early ancestors evolved. But, as with many groundbreaking ideas, not everyone is on board. Some scientists are questioning whether the study's findings are solid enough to back up such big claims. Ashton agrees that this theory fits well with some genetic evidence suggesting that the common ancestor of this species lived between 500,000 and 700,000 years ago. But he also points out that there are other ways to look at this. For example, fossil studies that track changes in skull and tooth shape suggest that the lineages of modern humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans might have already split before this bottleneck happened. If that's the case, Neanderthals and Denisovans might have dodged this bullet entirely. But the estimated bottleneck period, which is when our ancestors' population dropped so drastically, is too old for us to recover any ancient DNA with the methods we have today. The oldest hominin DNA we've been able to find is about 400,000 years old. And that's already pushing the limits. In Africa, where humanity first emerged, the climate isn't great for preserving ancient DNA. So it's even tougher to find anything from that far back. What we do have are some facts on the ground, like stone tools and bones. But even those are pretty hard to come by from this key period. Still, there are some sites out there from Eastern and Southern Africa, China, Indonesia, and Spain, that could hold the clues we need. Scientists believe that by studying skulls and bones found at these sites, they might be able to figure out if the changes seen in our bones match what the genetic models are suggesting. Nick Ashton thinks that to really understand this genetic theory, we need to compare it with the archaeological and fossil evidence. He suggests we need more refined dating of both current and new sites to see if they align with the proposed bottleneck period. Now, how did our ancestors survive such a tough time? According to the study's co-authors, Yi Husan Pan and Hai Pang Li, our ancestors must have been really united to fight against the harsh environment. They believe that sticking together was key to making it through those extreme conditions. 
The nine authors of this study, who are from China, Italy, and the United States, also think this population decline could explain why there seems to be a gap in the fossil record in Africa. They argue that the ancestors who experienced this population drop probably lived in Africa, although some may have been in Europe as well. If this theory is correct, it would also mean that our ancestors went through a decline in genetic diversity because there were fewer people around to reproduce with. This reduction in diversity could have significant impacts on the evolution of Homo heidelbergensis, a human ancestor that appeared around 700,000 years ago. It might have also played a role in shaping the evolution of Neanderthals and Denisovans by narrowing the genetic pool from which these groups evolved. But could there be more to this story? What if our understanding of this bottleneck is only scratching the surface? Debates, Alternative Theories, and Future Research Population changes, even those that happened hundreds of thousands of years ago, leave behind traces in our DNA. To dig into these ancient clues, a team of researchers led by Chinese geneticists developed a new tool called FitCol. They used FitCol to analyze the DNA of over 3,000 people from 10 African populations and 40 non-African populations. This tool is pretty cool. It looks at all the genetic mutations in these populations and calculates their likelihood of occurring as you go back in time. This helps the researchers estimate the population sizes at different points in our evolutionary history. According to the study's authors, their findings suggest that this severe bottleneck nearly wiped out our ancestral human population, dramatically reshaping the genetic diversity we see in humans today. They're saying that we were on the brink of extinction, and it left a lasting mark on our genes. But not everyone's buying it. Ragsdale, another scientist, isn't convinced that things were as dire as the study suggests. He thinks it might be a bit of a stretch to conclude that our ancestors were almost wiped out based on these results. Ragsdale points out that the actual population sizes could have been much larger than what FitCol suggests, especially since tools like FitCol focus on breeding sizes, which might not tell the whole story. He also suggests that what looks like a long period of tiny population sizes could actually be the result of much shorter periods of reduced numbers. But Chris Stringer from the Natural History Museum adds another layer to the story. He mentions that the method used in the study, called FitCol, is based on some assumptions, like how quickly mutations happen. The good news is that the study's authors have made FitCol available to other researchers. This means its accuracy will be tested further, and scientists might even use it to study the populations of other ancient human species, like Neanderthals and Denisovans. But it turns out, the story of our ancient ancestors might be even more complex than we thought. John Hawks, an anthropologist at the University of Wisconsin who wasn't involved in the study, brought up something that could change how we think about this whole bottleneck idea. Earlier this year, another study suggested that early humans in Africa weren't all living together as one big happy family. Instead, they were split into several distinct groups that only occasionally mixed and migrated between each other. Hawks thinks this structure might have made it look like there was a bottleneck, even if there wasn't a massive population drop. But the research team, led by Lee, points out that this supposed bottleneck period lines up with a significant moment in our evolution, the fusion of two chromosomes that created what we now know as chromosome 2. This fusion is why humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, while chimpanzees and gorillas, our closest relatives, have 24 pairs. It's possible that this chromosome fusion was a game changer, and only a small group of individuals carried this trait forward, which could explain the bottleneck. And there's another theory. Maybe this bottleneck didn't happen because of a sudden population drop due to climate change. Instead, it might reflect a speciation event. A moment when a small group of individuals split off from the other early humans after chromosome 2 evolved. This group could be the beginning of a new species that eventually led to us, modern humans. But scientists are still hoping for more ancient DNA data that could take us back to this time period and give us clearer answers. 
So, as we piece together clues from our distant past, it's clear that the story of human evolution is full of surprises. There's still so much we don't know. Could this bottleneck have been a turning point in our evolution? Or is there another explanation waiting to be discovered?